Hey everybody, I wanted to know that you're unstoppable. Today we are on the word session of the Unstoppable Nation. And this word that we are having today is really going to be a powerful one because we're not just going to be speaking today. Today we are saying things in a way that it will have results. So I'll be teaching you on how you can speak and get results where to speak and get results. Anything that has to do with your words and the authority that comes with it, I'm going to make you to be aware of it. And from henceforth, you won't be saying things carelessly because maybe some of those things you've said in the past have given you some result that you don't know you're experiencing now. Now you know how to guard your mouth, how to be more conscious, where to talk, how not to talk at the place that you're not supposed to talk, where to keep quiet so that you will be an excellent person. You see, they said even when a fool is quiet, sometimes they consider him wise is written in the bible so i want you to know that sometimes words can make you and words can break you and i want you to know that what is so powerful that when it drops you cannot pick it up so far years i've picked it up and it has entered into the mind of people there is no way you can really undone what you said so the only power you really have is to know what you want to say and how you want to say what you want to say and who you are talking to before you say so maybe because carelessness has taken you so far is not too late carefulness can take you even further with the way you speak you understand what i'm saying so my topic today is your word your power you understand let me rephrase it exercising the power of your words and today you will realize that some of the things that maybe you've been paying for to listen to is actually right close under your nose it's just for you to smell it or to hear it and it's going to really have a great effect in your life without further ado let me read some of the things that i've put down for you and you will begin to understand how powerful word can be your word your greatness your words your greatness your words your health your words your expansion your words your freedom you understand so let me quickly explain those things if you've not been as great as you want to be, be careful of the things that you are about to say from us for because the result of your greatness right now are the things that you've been saying consciously or unconsciously to yourself before. And everybody in life, we desire to be great. We want to lead. We are born a leader. And there is this desire to always lead in anywhere we find ourselves. Even when you don't want people to notice you, you want to do something that at the end of the day, you know that, yeah, you are leading in this place. People is in you, is in you. It's not like you're the one that wishing to be a leader is not a, a, a bad feeling. It's not like you want it all or you want to be Oliver Twist. No, God has given you this praise. So don't let anybody make you feel bad. Display what God has put in your DNA. He said you would have dominion. Anybody that is having dominion is you are leading a territory. You are leading an area. You understand? That is the first, first mandate of our Lord God for us. And if you are not leading, there is always a need for you to feel like leading. That's why you see, if you are not careful, when you see others that are leading in an area, envyness comes in heaviness comes in jealousy comes in and because you feel like i can do this better than this person what is this person even saying what is this person even doing it's because you really want to lead sometimes some jealousy does not come from the angle of the fact that you don't want your partner to be successful more than you or you don't want the person talking or the person superior to be successful more than you is coming from some so, some of those character of jealousy comes from personal judgment like you know within yourself that you could do this and because you could not do it the way the person is doing it you start getting angry that the person is getting the result so it's coming from angle of self-judgment you understand and you will be like how do you do this how do you? let me just tell you today let me tell you today you are born to lead too if anybody is leading today and is not you please give them their trophy and that is a way that your own leadership too will come listen well and good you've got the leadership of god in you uh, but the spirit of leader leadership is what you need you understand the spirit of leadership is what you need to become a leader you understand now these things that are in you you need to become it and becoming it comes from how you work it because the other the hebrew word for um work is becoming that is they call it aragon that is in hebrew and work means becoming so if you want to become 
a leader like you want to be leading a pack you want to be a master class coach you want to be an md you want to be a great person in a place then you need to know this you need to know that you need to become that leader and before you can become that means that you need to refine your skills of leadership meaning that coming from the angle that you know that you have resources from to speak to do things you develop it you do more research you try to watch yourself doing what you're doing you try to practice you try to rehearse as much as you can you and the reason why you're doing all this rehearsing all this practicing is because you want to become that which is inside of you you get what i mean it takes time to really become it when you become it it becomes like a lifestyle then when they ask you sorry are you that are, are you the one that coach about how to win you said me myself i'm a winner myself you understand? I asked one of my uncle, I said, sorry, sir, I heard that you are a boss in, uh, for example, let me say ABC Bank. You know what he told me? He said, I am not a boss in ABC Bank. I am ABC Bank because he, have done, he has done it over the years and now he has become a leader there. You understand? So he is the company. So if you want to be whatever you want to be, you need to walk towards it. And part of the things that makes you to be that is by words that you speak. The words you speak out. You understand? You can't, excuse me, you can't be keeping quiet when you're supposed to talk and you can't be talking when you're supposed to keep quiet. Number two, your word, your health. Some people, if they say that, oh God, I have serious stomach ache, instead of you to be like, you don't have stomach ache. You are just affected with, with ache in your stomach. Very soon it's going to go because it's seasonal. I know a lot of people that will say, oh, you, you've got some so stomach pain. Mine has been paining me since three days ago. Yours is even still small. You can still talk to me. I can't even really say anything. Are you trying to brag on who's having greater pain? That's a careless way of talking. That's a Christ, that's a way of, that, that's another way of creating another stomach ache in the future. We need to know how not to call out the negative. See, it's bad enough that sometimes we have some very, very negative thoughts. But they don't come into manifestation. Do you know how most of these thoughts come into manifestation? You'll be lured to say it out. And by the time you say it out, don't forget you are from a God that created the world with his words. And when you speak the word out, don't forget you are a mini God. You, you are creating. And you've created that. And now, if you consistently say, maybe because when you say you realize that people laugh, it makes people to feel really cool or calm around you, bruv, it means that you are bringing the occurrence of what you're saying to come even faster and closer and more powerful. Your words are very, very important. Number three, your word, your expansion. Your word, in, 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 if you are in pain of like enlargement, like you notice that things are not working out, don't say I give up. Don't say I'm done with this thing. And I know that this thing can never even really amount into anything. Speak to yourself. Speak life to yourself, right? Speak life to yourself. Say something like, I know this is just seasonal. My enlargement is here. When somebody beside you asks you, what did you just say? You that you've not eaten since money. Tell them, yes, I'm having my millions, billions. See, it, 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 sometimes... It doesn't have to go the way you are thinking it should go. The way somebody achieved their 100 million is, is not the same way. Mr. The way Mr. A achieved his 100 million is not the same way Mr. B will achieve it. People are doing different things to make money. Legitimately. Some people are working in the bank, they will make money. Some people are entrepreneurs, they will make money. Some people are nurses and doctors, they will make money. Some people are furnitures, uh, furniture makers like carpenters, they, 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 they will make money. Some people are painters, they will make money. Some people are builders, they will make money. At the end of the day, everybody is doing something to make this money. So don't limit your mind to, this is what I must do to make this money. Don't limit your mind to that, please. That's why when you pray to God, don't always say, God, this is what, this is how I want you to do it. Let this man give me this money. No, whatever you want, just say it. And say, God, I trust that you've done this for me. Ask God, then at the end of the prayer, say, God, I'm happy and I thank you for you've done this for me. Say, I want to tell you, with this kind of prayer, if it did not happen, it means that God is delaying it for your own good. And it will definitely happen at the right time. You understand? So when you speak, speak with the mind that you know that God can flip anything to happen. And even your greatest enemy may be the one that will bless you. 
So don't try to confine God with your mouth. Don't try to confine God with your thoughts. Don't try to confine God with how you think things should be done. And don't try to confine God with your experience. Make sure that when you pray to God, have an open heart. If you need money, God, please give me an idea that I can that, that, that can take me from here to the level of the money that I'm looking for. Or oh God, make me a problem solution to a problem that they will even pay me more than what I'm asking for. See, you may pray all this prayer, and as you are just doing something, something else may bring the money. Or what you want to use the money that you need for to do, somebody may give you. Because you've opened your mind to speak to God, you are not confining God. Then God too likes to show people like that. that see, because you trust me, I will tell you what you think will happen in a year's time. It can happen within three days. Don't confine, don't tell God how you want it to be done. Just if you don't want something in your life, God, I don't want this particular sickness. I rebook it in Jesus' name. Don't be looking and be thinking, has it gone? Just leave it. When you say trust God like a baby, a baby will trust his dad or, or, or his mother. And God will do it. The, that, that's why sometimes when people experience miracles, they will say, I wasn't expecting it because that is the kind of God you have. You will know when it's happening, but it will happen. If you have faith. Now, your word, your freedom. A lot of people are bound. They, they put chains on their neck, on their arms, on their leg because of the word. They've tried to make people to feel to feel comfortable around them just because they, 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 they want to make people to laugh. They will say something like, um, me, I cannot go find life. Just because you want people to laugh. And those words are chaining you down. Some, some of you, it's not even you that said it. Some people have said some bad things into your life before you were born. And you are reinforcing it because everything around you is still speaking what they've said. So you are saying what they said, like, this life don't tire me. I feel like going to heaven. Say, so waiting to happen for this life. Be careful. Be very, 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 very careful. Be very, 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 very careful. Whenever devil brings the negative, always say the positive. In fact, a signal of confessing positivity out is the negative environment that you have. Anything that is happening to you negatively, make sure it's the opposite you are saying. Like the Bible says, let the weak say that I am strong. Let the poor say that I am, I am rich. Let the poverty stricken one say that I am wealthy. Let the person that is sick say that I am healed. Let the person that does not have a job says, go and look for the position you want. If it's an entry-level position, if it's a customer care service you want to do, I am a customer care service of, um, I'm a customer care service of a very big company. Say it to yourself. I'm the head of customer service. Say it to yourself. At least, even if it's not happening that time, you are feeling good because you are ailing yourself. Because whatever you say to yourself has a way of operating on your mind. And let me tell you something, that is where a lot of things are happening. Then when your mind sends signals out, if it's a negative signal, it's going to be something that will bind you down. If it's a positive signal, no matter how the chains are strong that are binding you down, it's already unlocking it. You think it's a joke. Why did the Bible say that whatever you bind on earth, you bind in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth, you lose. these are the secret. See, let me tell you something about Bible. Bible, uh, about the way Jesus speaks, rather. Jesus speaks, excuse me, in parable. And do you know the meaning of parable? Parable is like saying the truth, but not mentioning the truth. You are saying the truth in a story. But you are not pinpointing it like the way I'm giving you bullet point now. No. You know why? Because what he says is life. He knows the power of words. So whatever what he says means to you is the meaning to you. Is the life to you. Is the rhema to you. That's why 10 pastors can read the same Bible verse and all of them, they are going to say different things. On the same Bible verse. Because they have different revelation. Different trauma. Because God will make you to understand. Based on your own personal need. Or based on what he wants to send you to do. So whatever your situation is. That has been pinning you down. That has been you now, Should not be a dictator of you. Now proclaiming bondage into your life. Of you now proclaiming chain into your life. I want you to know that you are greatly unstoppable. Only if you believe. When I started this Unstoppable, I started the Unstoppable Club, uh, the Mr. Unstoppable, Mr. I love when they call me that name. Because, yeah, I can't be stopped. 
I can't be stopped. I've seen stops, but I've seen that I can't be stopped. When I get to stops, I tell stop that I, I am unstoppable. You know what we stop we do? Stop will give way. Another stop will come. I am unstoppable because I keep saying it. The stop will always be there. You are the one that will be pushing it away and be going. Because if you say you are ready to stop, the stop is already there already. So you need, you need, you need, you need to know these things. And this is like getting inclined. See, everything that I speak and I teach on the Unstoppable Nation is to know yourself. Because when you know yourself enough and you like yourself enough, you would want to know how you were made, what you were made for and what you're supposed to do. And by the time you engage with all that, there is no way that your life will not have a meaning. And there is no way that you will not be relevant. And there is no way that you will not have value. Moving forward, use your word to build your life, not to destroy it. Always speak things to build, not to destroy. If you're in a marriage, no matter how serious your fight is with your spouse, I know sometimes it's very crazy. I'm there. Sometimes very, very crazy that if you don't say that bad thing, it's like you are not okay. You want to just say it as it hurts. But if you can just hold yourself and say the positive. The positive is what will happen. But if you don't still hold yourself and say it's the negative, it's the negative that will still find its way to manifest. I heard, a, I heard of a pastor. He said when he married his wife, it was hell on earth. Serious one. Like back-to-back -back fight every day. Then he was already contemplating leaving the wife totally. And the Holy Spirit ministered to him. You said she's this, she's that. I agree with you. But can you just be calling her the opposite of what you've been passing through with her? And he says, despite the fact that she didn't change, that she continued, he was saying, oh, my lovely wife. When she knocked, oh, my God, I just love that voice. Then it turns to, it turns to, it turns to laughter. Like when she's nagging, I'm like, oh, my God, I love when you sound like this. But I don't mean to get you angry, my sweet love. Before it's to be, you are very stupid. You are a bad person. So you can nag after everything I've done. No, she, it changed the game. He said he did not even remember. It's after some time that he realized, ah. We've not fought for weeks. What's been going on? And it's because he took the initiative. He took this secret to, to, to say things that would happen. And the thing later started, those things started manifesting later. You know why God changed the name of Jacob to Israel? So that whenever you call the name Israel, that thing that is behind the name of Israel manifests. So we should be careful the kind of nicknames we even give ourselves. You understand? We should be careful the kind of names that we allow people to call us. Because all these things, they have impact. We are in the world of frequency. We, 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 you, 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 cannot, you don't know how your phone is connecting with another phone in another country. Yet you're talking real time. You're talking. You're saying I and the person is responding. That's the same way you don't know the power of your words in the spirit. It goes for and the network of the spirit is even stronger. And do you know the most the 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 the, 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 the ah God? I want to use the right word. Do you know the dangerous secret of this? A lot of things have happened in the unseen world before it manifests a little bit in the seen world. There's what they call correlation in geology. They said if you see a mountain coming out in a, maybe like. A bit of a stone coming out here and you walk like uh you travel like let's say a thousand miles away and you see the same type of rock somewhere maybe bigger you understand and you tested it and you saw that the one that you saw 500 miles away and this one excuse me they have the same mineral they have the same chemical properties they have the same everything and they have the same dating do you know what that means correlation it means that that rock that you saw 500 meters away, um, 500 miles away, if you check underneath the ground, you will see that it's the same rock that is that one. It connects under the ground all the way. All the way. What that means is it did not manifest well somewhere. And in another place, it's a very, very big rock somewhere else. And do you know what that means for you? That means that, that means that on that level, it means that there are some things that are happening in the unseen world that all of us don't know about. A lot of things are happening in the unseen world that me and you don't know about, but they are there. 
they are there. These rocks that I'm talking about, they form the foundation of the world. In Africa, we have what they call the basement rock. That's why we don't have um that's why we don't have earthquakes and all that, because the rock, the tectonic rock under Africa is strong. It's not the type that it shifts like other continents whereby they experience earthquake, because that's what brings about earthquake. So now I'm trying to tell you, if your life is, if your words are not solid, that is giving you solid foundation, even the days that you thought that they are not effective, then you, there is nothing you'll be able to build on. If you are releasing careless words, if you are releasing careless words, it's forming bases in your life, bases. And if the foundation is faulty, what can the righteous do? What do you want to build on it? So that's why I'm bringing the awareness of the power of words to you today, so that you'll be able to understand that you are that powerful. You are just that powerful. Don't ever, that's why I always tell people, don't look down on yourself. Even if you feel like things are not going the way it's supposed to go, don't look down on yourself. You are just that powerful. Your words are powerful. If you go to a pastor for something, it's words they will speak to you. Even somebody that will prophesy into your life, it's words that they will use to prophesy. If you go to an herbalist, it's words that they will speak to you. When you want to pray, it's words that you are speaking to God. When you hear from God, it's words that God is telling you. And this is why you cannot joke with this. It's a constant thing. Every human being that can speak have this power. And inside the power is an authority. And it's because you are not using the authority and the power. That is why you have not been experiencing the manifestation of what you're saying. A lot of people are praying. But in their prayers, they're already thinking how they want things to be done. And how they think the thing will be done. You are just using your mind to cancel what you're saying out. So when you want to have it, have it. When you don't want to have it and you want to leave things to chances, leave it to chances. But the results will always justify the means. Now let's go, uh, yeah, listen to God more than people. Yeah, you know why? Let's, let, let, let me say this. Everything that God says about you is the only true and constant thing in your life. Everything that every other person has said is subject to asking and verification. You know why God's own is the most constant and the strongest? It's because it's the one that made you. Before you even met any human being, before you came out, before your mother and your father saw your face, it's God that made you. And he knows why he's making you and he knows where he wants you to be of purpose for him. So it's whatever he says to you that is final. It's whatever he says to you that that is the game changer. Now, every other thing you meet after the maker has made you, they are like secondary. You understand? So, by the time the secondary is trying to push you off the limit, don't forget, you have your primary source, which is your God. Then you go and take his words to counter what the situation of the secondary is saying, then you win. Then you win. And if you've not won, then you don't give up. But I'm very sure that at the end of the day, you're going to win. You're going to win. So today, I want you to know, you can't be more than what you say. You are a result of what you've been saying. I've said it before. You can't be more than what you say. You can write this down. You can't be more than what you say. You are a result of what you've been saying. So today, this is the call for action for you. You need to start saying positive things to your life. Start saying positive things to your family. Stop saying positive things to your children. Stop saying positive things to your dreams. Start saying positive things about that job. If you don't like the job, start saying positive things about the new place you want to go to. You have the power to conquer the things that are embarrassing you, that are rubbishing you. But you've been quiet for too long. So you can't be more than what you say. So if you see that you are not really more right now, I want you to start calling your more out with your words. So one, as a man thinks in his heart, so easy. As a man thinketh in his heart, so easy. See, let me tell you something. Before you could produce good words out, you have to get it from somewhere. And where you're getting it from is from your heart. Now, you cannot give what you don't have. 